I started life um, as someone who wanted to become a colorectal surgeon. And when I was a relatively junior registrar, um, I got elected to be chair of the junior doctors committee in the hospital in which I was working at the time. And as part of that, I was invited to attend the medical staff committee. And the first couple of times I went along and I thought, what on earth is this on about? It was the traditional model, you know, car parking, um, whether or not they continued to have a consultant lunch table, those sorts of things. Um, so I, I, I didn't find this terribly edifying. Uh, and I got attracted to go to the BMA Juniors Doctor Committee meetings and moved up in the sort of hierarchy through that. And it was a hierarchy in those days. I stayed in the role as medical director and tried to make sure that the quality systems worked really, really well in the organisation. Uh, it took us through opening half the hospital as a PFI, um, took us through a, a failed attempt to become a foundation trust. Uh, they're, they're still trying. Um, and then we became an integrated care organisation. I was appointed to the role of medical director for that. And that was fascinating because it gave me the opportunity to learn about all the bits of medicine that I didn't know about because I was stuck in hospital. So before we became an ICO, if someone said community services to me, I thought district nurses, um, there must be something else, but I don't know what it is. So when we became an integrated care organisation, the first thing that I did was go out and meet the clinical leads and clinical directors in the community parts of the organisation and find out much more about what they did. And it's fascinating to see the different model, which is far less doctor-focused in terms of delivering those services. So what are the challenges in England? Well, there's a very clear expectation of delivery of the highest quality of care for all our patients all the time, and that's clearly been spurred by Francis and Berwick. And I'm not for one minute suggesting that it's the wrong thing that we should be expecting, but it is a very difficult thing to deliver, as you've heard partly from the, the previous speaker. There's a huge media and political focus on the NHS, and uh, particularly on the four-hour target at the moment, to the extent that the Prime Minister has a weekly meeting to hear how it's going, and as you may have heard, the Secretary of State has taken to phoning chief executives to ask why they're not meeting the target. We've clearly got a new challenge, well, not that new, but it's publicly new, on seven-day services, and many of us will have to change the way we work to deliver that, but the seven-day services report will be published in the next couple of weeks and will have very clear standards that we will all be expecting to address. We've got the challenge about integration of care and joining up not only the care pathway but the patient electronic records going with that and that's quite an exciting programme of work and I think that and the seven day services will feed one another. And of course we've got the ongoing financial challenge and the requirement to make sure that incentives are aligned rather than having perverse incentives as we have in the current tariff. So where are the opportunities? Well, first of all, almost all the things I've described in the challenges are actually opportunities. It really does give us an opportunity to do things in a different way because we can't carry on doing them the same way. The system is broken from that point of view. There's also the very clear recognition now that clinical leadership is absolutely key to delivering all these things. And so doctors as medical leaders are in a much more prominent position than we have ever been before. Uh, you know, the joke is no pressure, guys, but but actually, we have the opportunity to make a difference because we are the ones, people like us in the room, are the ones who actually understand how the system works and understand the sorts of things that can make a difference. We just need to make sure we give ourselves and others give us the time and space to make the difference. We've got the NHS Outcomes Framework, which has got very, very explicit things that we are going to deliver in England for our patients. Things like the transparency of data, things like having much better recording of patient experience and feeding that back, the focus on preventive care and early diagnosis, and that gives us a very clear steer as to what we should be focusing on. We've got value-based commissioning, which is a wonderful opportunity, so that if you link that with the data transparency, both in terms of organisational performance and in terms of individual performance, the people who don't want to pull their weight won't have anywhere to hide. Organisationally, the quality dashboards will be in the public domain. Individually, what we do in terms of our benchmark national outcomes are becoming public. For example, the surgical specialties that have already had to publish their outcomes this year. And, of course, this will feed through into appraisal and revalidation, where, the, for me, the biggest addition to that is in the areas of quality improvement and the essential inclusion of patient experience in our appraisal every year. You can't discount those any longer. 
I think particularly important is the fact that clinical leadership, which we said is embedded in the national strategy, actually has good mechanisms for support now. We clearly have the King's Fund courses, such as the ones that Vijaya runs. We've got the NHS Leadership Academy, which gives us an opportunity to do multi-professional leadership development. And, of course, we've got the Faculty of Medical Leadership and Management, which provides many of us with an opportunity to meet with like-minded colleagues who actually want to make a difference in this area. There's the recognition now from this year's King's Fund report that heroic leadership is not the most effective model and a collaborative approach is much more likely to be effective in the current situation of the really wicked problems that we face in healthcare. So it's really a good time for us to work together and help one another and I think this conference is a great opportunity for us to take a step forward together. Thank you.